Hey Abby, yeah, I'm really sorry it's so late. Um, yeah, what a crazy day starting. Um, a bike race at quarter past four. Um, yeah, it, it was quite a challenge um, getting massage and dinners and everything done. But now finally time to turn off the light and go to sleep. Um, yeah, it was a pretty brutal day. Um, my team once again did an incredible job looking after me, positioning me uh, going into the Col du Aspan. Um, yeah, I'd say Movistar um, did something really crazy um, with their pacing on the Col du Aspan. I think at the end of the day, it was to the detriment of Annemiek as well. Um, so, yeah, they were a little bit too ambitious, I would say. Um, yeah, however, I'm really happy with the way that I managed to keep my composure, uh, pace myself together with uh, Juliette Lebeau. Um, so even though we didn't follow on the Aspen, um, you know, everything stayed within reach going into the Tomele. Uh, then, yeah, some really crazy tactics um, up the road, obviously an incredible ride from um, Cassia. Um, yeah, massive kudos for that. Um, that was really something quite spectacular. And when I heard over the radio that Cassia was up the road and Anamik and Demi were playing games, um, yeah, it was I couldn't actually believe it, to be honest. I was like, what, am I hearing correctly? Um, anyways, um, yeah, it all came back together with Annemiek and, and Demi uh, before the Tomele. Marlon did a crazy pace um, on the beginning part of the Tomele. However, she felt a little bit short, um, which was quite interesting. Uh, we could literally just see Cassia. She was literally within reach, but Marlon stopped. Um, and I think, yeah, that influenced things quite heavily. Um of course, now in hindsight, I think to myself, oh, should I have jumped? Could I have jumped? I don't know. Um, it's easy to say um, in hindsight, but at the end of the day, yeah, Cassia did a great job uh, pacing herself and keeping that gap. Um, I, I really thought at some point uh, she would explode, but um, she didn't. Um, and that even at some point, you know, I thought we were about to catch her. It was very difficult to see with obviously the mist. Um, so, yeah, I could just see Annemiek ahead of me after uh, Demi attacked. Um, yeah, so we just dropped people one by one, uh, always trying to kind of stay within myself. Um, and then, yeah, Demi attacked. It was a pretty crazy attack and I just knew um, I would kill myself to follow. So that's when I decided to focus on my pace and my myself. Um, and actually, Anamik was just always ahead of me. Um, so it was a good sort of carrot to keep chasing. Um, however, you know, with the mist, it was very difficult to see. So I thought, I thought we were going to pass Cassia at some point because at one point I think the gap came right down, but then it went right out again. So it was quite confusing. Um, but at the end of the day, I left it all out there. I gave my best and uh, fourth was all I could manage on the day. Um, but having said that, you know, it is the biggest bike race in the world. Um, and so I think a fourth place and top five in GC um, is something to be really proud of. Um, it was really amazing having all the sport out on the roads, lots of familiar faces, people from Girona, um, and then, of course, Rocker Corba Collective, Rocker Corba Cycling staff, Albert, our, um, one of our head guides and mechanic at Rocker Corba Cycling was running next to me for quite some meters um, in the final kilometers, which really gave me a lot of motivation through all the suffering. And then just seeing Rocker Corba Collective members' faces and family, it was really, really incredible. So, um, a, a definitely a day to go down um, in the memory bank um, as a highlight of my career. And yeah, there's still a lot to play for tomorrow. Um, the podium places uh, for definitely for third op, op is pretty close. Uh, but even second, you know, with the TT, you never know, especially after all the effort that went into today. So I'm going to try to get a good night's sleep and be ready to give it my all tomorrow. It's Lucinda again, um, second last day, epic day, kind of, Tourmalet, but before that we had the Aspen, and um, for the insiders I had the Dumoulinger, so that was not so funny, but I did not have to stop, thank God, and um, so yeah, it was a long way up to the Tourmalet, I have to say. But I did found a nice group with a lot of Dutchies, so that was nice. And um, yeah, 
you know, normally you try to enjoy. And I also promised I would give you an update on how nice the views are. But I saw nothing. Only fuck. So, yeah, unfortunately, sorry, you have to figure it out yourself. <laughs> but um, what I did enjoy was like, what was it? From kilometer five to go till three and a half or something. There were basically only crowds. So uh, I think I have a come there. It must be. I went much, much faster and I had a lot of party fun, actually. So, yeah, that was the most exciting thing for me from the day. And... Um, now, massage, some pizza, some wine, and tomorrow, the last day, time trial day. Hey, Abby. Yeah, no worries. Oh, what a long day. Uh, nothing to do in the morning, and then, yeah, just rushing until midnight. It's, uh, yeah, it's been a long day, um, off and on the bike. But, yeah, I'm really, really happy, actually. I crossed the line with the, with a big smile and... I really enjoyed every moment of this uh, of this stage. Uh, it was oh, so crowded. I had goosebumps. I partied uh, with some of the the people on the side of the road with big music, and I saw many Breton flags and people screaming my name again. And it's very unbelievable. I I never experienced that in my whole uh, career, and uh, I'm really happy I could. I could, um, yeah, I could leave that at least once. Um, so yeah, super positive day. I had good legs, just stayed in the gruppetto and I hope I have those good legs tomorrow for the, the time show. But whatever happened, uh, I'm really happy with my tour. Um, I all, all, almost made history and um, yeah, it was not so far. And uh, I know I pleased a lot of people doing this and trying. So, yeah, it's been a really good tour so far. But we can talk about this tomorrow after the TT. Um, yeah, have a good night. Yeah, just a little like dark point of this day is not having Alice anymore for tomorrow. She was out of delay, not so far from the delays, actually. So I'm very proud of my girls today. They fought really hard to be there and to be at the start tomorrow. So it felt good that we were, as a team, really happy of our day. Yeah, that's it. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bienvenue au Tour de France Femme. C'est la huitième, la dernière étape, peau à peau. À toi, Abby. We are brought into this episode with some audio diaries from yesterday. It was a just crazy late evening for everybody. Um, I was receiving audio diaries at 1.30 in the morning from Ashimo and Pasio. And I don't know what time you got to bed. Uh, yeah, as well after one o'clock. Yeah, so we we started out. I didn't. I don't want anyone to ever miss the audio diaries. So we started off with those to start the episode. Now let's dive into Poe for the final stage of the Women's Tour de France Femme. Before Matt and I talk about the episode today, we're building the best damn bike website on the planet, and we need your help. Join the Escape Collective and get access to our content. Monthly subscriptions start at just $6.99 US dollars a month, or you can become an annual member and save 30%. For more information and to support our vision, head on over to escapecollective.com slash join. We're super grateful for everyone who's joined. Thank you. Matt Deneve. Happy Mickey. One last time. Wow. It's really flown by this week. It feels like another lifetime that we're back in clermont ferrand End of the first stage. Uh, yep, absolutely crazy week. I actually don't even remember what that first stage was like. It was so much has happened since then. Yeah, it really has. I mean, a lot has happened, a lot has changed, but in some ways things have stayed the same with, you know, the SD Work Show the whole way through, really. <laughs> I think I wrote on the first stage for a headline, uh, Welcome to the SD Work Show, and certainly got that today. Finish, yeah, one, two again today. Just like <laughs> one, two, we three started. today. And one to everyone. I didn't want to think about that, but thank you so much for <laughs> thank you so much for bringing that to my attention. You're Would welcome. you like to set the scene? Yeah, we're sitting in a I guess you'd call it a, a billiards room, a parlor room. Uh, 
a drawing room. I don't know, something in, in a hotel in the middle of Poe. We have a um, Zoom recorder. We don't have a candlestick, a knife, or a yeah <laughs> poison. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since I played. Clue? Clue? To, clue? Clue, yeah. Um, yeah, looking outside, I uh, can see the trek, a little trek bus, which looks like it's about to leave. Um, yeah, we're kind of in the an hour or so after the stage finished. Things are starting to quieten down in town, but um, yeah, pretty pretty amazing days racing again. It was amazing. There was a a lot that happened in a very short time trial, a very quick time trial, won by Marlon Royster. I think we all saw that coming, right? Yeah, I think I said yesterday it would take something pretty remarkable to beat her, and uh, yeah, she got the job done. It was pretty close though, only ten seconds back to Demi Vollering uh, in second place, which was enough for her to secure the overall win. Um, but yeah, Royce are just just so so good. The way she blew past other riders out on course, I'm not sure how many she overtook, but it was it was a couple, that's for sure. I chatted with Kate on uh, our buddy at Zwift, who we just is. <sighs> Gosh, I just love her so much. Uh, hanging out at the finish line, and she actually got to go in the car behind Marlon Royster for her for her race. Which wow! Uh, so let's just I'll just throw that in right now. All right, I'm here in the VIP. It's super nice. I've been super blessed to be able to hang out in here a little bit this week with Kate. You got to sit in the car behind Marlon Royster. How was that? So I am still getting my footing after getting out of that car because it was so fast. <laughs> that girl can corner. It was amazing. It was really thrilling. Yeah, I was talking to a couple of the Aussies that said that, well, today is still super hard for them because they want to make time cut. It's not like they can kind of just coast through the day. The course was really fast, so it was super fun to ride. It was really fast. Yeah, I actually got to ride like half of it this morning and wow. I mean, it was, uh, I was definitely like, this is going to be thrilling to watch because just quick corners, like some, like some just straights that you can really pick up some speed with a little descent, nice climb for viewing, lined with fans, incredible. How are you feeling about this second Tour de France Femme? Would you call it a success? What do you think, uh, how, how has it added on from last year? I don't think a success would even do it justice. This is insane, honestly. Like, I really didn't think you could top last year because it just the feelings of like, oh wow, it's just like everything was it was so exciting. But now we're just talking about how incredible these performances are and how many breakthrough stars we have and the rivalries and like everything that makes for great sport. So that we're now evolving to where we're actually talking about the action and the athletes. That makes me so happy. I need to uh, talk about outfits of the day because you and I both have had a lot of fun dressing ourselves this week. What has your inspiration been? I mean, I'm so lucky to work for a brand with these incredible vibrant colors of like pink and orange and I throw a little yellow in for the TDF splash. So I've had so much fun since the last tour thinking about what I'm going to wear this tour. <laughs> um, because honestly, I also like I want people to know that we're not just a title sponsor that's smacking our name on something, that we believe in this, we live it, we love it. And I personally enjoy this so much. I'm wearing orange sequins today, which yes, they do exist. And <laughs> I'm so happy. And it just, I, I feel like I can be my true self here as well. And it's just beautiful. It's really fun. I, I want this race to look and feel different from the men's. Oh, and it does. I mean, I think it's it's completely unique, and I love that the race started separate from the men's this year. It got a chance to stand on its own two feet, and I think it, I think it was so much better for it. I mean, last year was amazing in Paris, but I think the start this year and the fact that the women were separate from the men's, there was no comparisons made. There was no talk of the men's um, Tour de France. It was all about the women all week long. Everybody is here because they are passionate about seeing, you know, the women's scene and seeing these athletes and these teams. Like sponsors, pay attention. This is this is a great space to play right now. <laughs> it's so true, and I love that. Like, not just you and me, but there's like more women around the race who have really like embraced. I don't know, like dressing up every day and like just celebrating being women. And it's just, oh man, it's just so fun and it feels so so inviting and warm and cozy, but also just like. I don't know. It's it's this this Je ne sais quoi. yeah this <laughs> <laughs> this space that I feel like I've never experienced in cycling before. That's what I keep saying. This looks different. It feels different, but it feels like the future. We are making cycling more accessible, more inclusive, more beautiful, and at the end of the day, 
just incredible action. So when people ask me why I insist on saying Tour de France Femme Zwift every time I say the name of the race, that's why. Your, your, your question has been answered now. Thank you so much. Watch the Vem. <laughs> we definitely knew that Marlon Royster was going to have that ride. We kind of knew that Demi Vollering was also going to have a great time trial. She's been getting better and better every season in this discipline. We need to talk about Lada Kopecky. Yeah, what a week for her. Um, yeah, I, I wrote after stage one that um, and quite optimistically I thought that if Lotta could get through stage two and stage four, those climby days that she might have a chance of wearing the yellow jersey right through to the Tourmalet. She did that, and then that was really just the start. Like the way she rode on the Tourmalet yesterday was incredible to put herself into, what, fourth overall. And then today um, put in a, an excellent time trial, very, very strong time trial to finish third on the stage, which was enough to move her up to second overall. Um, she was saying afterwards that she... Yeah, not in her wildest dreams would she have imagined that this was possible. Um, and that a couple of days ago on the eve of the Tourmalet stage, Anna van der Breggen said to her, have you ever tried to ride hard up a climb as long as the Tourmalet? And Lotta apparently said to her, no, and what are you planning? And then basically the job, the job was just stick with the leaders as long as she possibly could. And then she described the last 2K of the Tourmalet as the worst two kilometers of her life. Um but it was enough that, you know, her effort yesterday and her excellent stage one win and the gap she got there was enough to have her finish basically on the same time as uh, Kashi Niwadoma, um, but fractionally ahead of her. So, yeah. Fractionally, to, you mean like 0. 0.03 seconds. Yeah. Over, yeah, 25 hours of racing or something for the week. Um, yeah. So, second overall for... Kopecky and I don't you know we know she's a good climber but I don't think anyone would have predicted that <laughs> she would finish second overall in the Tour de France which had a, a Tourmalet a mountaintop finish yeah it's just unreal and I feel like I can't wait to see what she does next I feel like we say that a lot but for in this case it's just wow yeah I know we're not we don't want to throw forward too much but just a real quick thing about worlds yeah. she was asked in the mix zone uh sorry uh, Demi Volering was asked in the mix zone about worlds and uh she just laughed and said well I know a lot is going to be very hard to beat um so you know SD works has been incredibly dominant this week but when we see them all kind of split up into their uh, separate teams for worlds that's going to be fascinating that's a very good point it's um there was a run there when Bowles Dolmans, the previous version of SC Works, they held the rainbow jersey for many, many years with many different riders. They had like they just swapped it around and then it kinda started to move around after a little while and perhaps it will return to the shoulders of SC Works in two weeks' time. I wouldn't want to bet against that. We can go into it in more detail in the weeks ahead, obviously, but I think it'd be pretty surprising if an SD Works rider wasn't wearing rainbows in a few weeks' time. Four stage wins four different riders we wrote in the first stage that they got another one two and they've got absolute multitude of those this season they end up going one two overall and the final stage one two three swept the podium so we've been critical all week of their tactics and i i think we would still maintain that they've made some curious choices out on the road throughout um but they're that good that it just doesn't matter. They just still win everything and not everything, but, you know, I think they'll... I know they're very happy with how their week went. It was a dream, as Kopecky said uh, in the mix zone. Um, yeah, I'm just glad they didn't win every stage. Me too, and I'm really glad that we got three just nail-biting, exciting wins mm -hmm. in between the, the SD Works show sandwich. So that was really nice because I think... They, it's been interesting to watch the downfall of F SC Works this week, even in their, even in their dominance or semi-dominance of the race. If you look at it by the numbers, I feel like we sat here, we recorded a whole podcast to kind of like, I don't know, break the third wall, fourth wall, bare, glass wall. I don't know <laughs> to break walls. <laughs> We recorded a whole podcast without actually mentioning SC Works. I've slotted this in so you wouldn't have known unless I mentioned it, but I feel like it is worth a mention because we've come out of this race with a lot a lot of stories and somehow SC Works is not the story we want to talk about. Yeah, and I think that's actually 
a good thing that they ended up being so dominant by the end and yet it was still such a good race like they they ended up yeah w- with so much and yet there was so much exciting racing along the way and and some exciting winners and some exciting finishes and that's a great thing because I think there was a bit of a fear on the first stage. I, I know I was afraid on that first stage that it was just going to be, you know, every single day. What we've seen all yeah. year long, yeah. Exactly, yeah. There was absolutely precedent for it. So, yeah, that they managed to do that and it didn't destroy the race I think is is fantastic. I think a lot of it had to do with the general chaotic energy around them all week the disqualification of danny sam the 22nd penalty on volering the the bad mouthing the media by volering and by danny sam like oh or bad mouthing the aso and the jury like all of this stuff is mm. just has been such a weird week for them it really has and i wonder whether they'll come out of this race with fewer fans than they had before or more like it's in, in some ways, they've kind of annoyed a lot of people, as the social media kind of uh, vibe suggests. But on the other hand, you know, their social media paints a picture of a team that's just having a lot of fun, just a you know, just a bunch of gals just riding around France, having a great time with each other. Um, so I don't know. It's such a weird one. It's yeah, the vibe around them has been very strange, um, but they still keep winning, and I don't know what to make of it. To be honest, I think we'll need to take a bit of a step back from it all and uh, to process it. Yep. We'll talk about it a lot more, I think in a couple of weeks or in a week or when we were time. <laughs> uh, okay. Two other riders. We're, we're going to talk about a lot. There's like a lot to talk about. I think we should, we're going to break it up with an audio diary. So we have an audio diary right now from Ella Wiley who had a great week. And, uh, yeah, late night for her last night, so she didn't get one in. So she's going to talk about both stages right now. (laughs) So stage eight done today, the time trial. It feels pretty special to have finished my first Tour de France. I've hopefully a few more to come. Yeah, the TT, it actually looked like it would be raining for it, but the weather turned around and the roads dried, so that was quite nice. But it was still a bit overcast and moody, um, so not quite the 30 degrees sunny finish I pictured but no it was pretty special to finish and and celebrate with my teammates um yeah it was a pretty good ride I think for end of tour legs yeah I just pushed as hard as I could and what happened happened uh but yeah yesterday was pretty epic the tourmalet finish uh something I've been looking forward to it was really cool. The crowds were insane. Um, I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And yeah, with about four Ks to go, I attacked my group and um, then just kind of kept the momentum and just pushed as hard as I could to the top. <laughs> it was pretty special to have my family running alongside me at one point too. Um, the descent was really cold though. We had to descend because um, not the camper vans couldn't make it to the top. So we descended like five or six or seven Ks and we had these little whistles so that fans would see us coming because it was also um, all through fog, the whole stage. Honestly, I'd never seen anything like it. You could only see maybe 10 metres in front of you, which had this really cool, like, moody feeling to it. But at the same time, I also would have loved (laughs) a really sunny stage. But, um, no, it was pretty insane. And, like, the pictures just make it look so crazy. So, yeah, a pretty special feeling. Um, But, yeah, no, the day was good and my teammates worked really hard and I think we can be really proud of our performances. So... Yeah, the Tour de France, done. Can't believe it. <laughs> so Cash and Iwodoma finished just a hair's breadth away from second on the podium. She secured the polka dot jersey yesterday, so she's going to walk out of this race with, with a win in the mountains classification. I didn't get a chance to chat with her at the finish, but I, I imagine that she might be tossing and turning a little bit about where she could have gotten one second over yeah. eight stages of racing. Yeah, I managed to listen into some of her interviews in the the mix zone just before, and 
she was pretty happy. She said that she gave it everything she could yesterday and today, um, but that she'd be lying if she said she wasn't thinking about where she could have found that time that you mentioned. Uh, it's such a small margin, isn't it? Less than a second over the, over the course of eight days of racing. And um, But I think, you know, once she's had a chance to look back on this, she'll be very happy. That's third overall two years in a row. And her ride yesterday was exceptional. Um, she already had a lot of fans, but I'm sure she made a lot more again yesterday. And the way she fought today um, to defend her podium was was very impressive as well. It was the time trial of her life today. I mean, she's not known as being a super strong time trialist. She didn't have a great time trial at Tour de Swiss, which really impacted her race there. And I think she said yesterday after the race that she went home and she just thought about her weaknesses and where she could gain gain strength, what she needed to work on. And her and her coach spent a really long time working on those weaknesses. And one of them was climbing on these long climbs. And she proved yesterday when she held on to that attack that she, she can do that. Mm. But time trialing, I think today, like if you look at the results and you look at the fact that she was ninth on the day, it doesn't, it's like, you could look at that and be like, Oh man, that's, that's not a great time trial for Kasha. That is a great time trial time trial. Yeah, and I think it's a real credit to her that she's approached this race in the way that she did. Um, she's a rider that's been around for a long time and had a lot of really good results. And in the last few seasons, as you wrote yesterday in a great piece on Escape Collective, she Thanks. sort of plateaued a little bit, um, reached a point where she just wasn't able to, I guess, keep making those gains. And I, I think that her approach over the last few weeks to really go back and focus on those weaknesses and come to this race having worked on those is is a credit to her because I think she could have easily kicked the clutch in and just, you know, kind of cruised a little bit, but she's not that sort of rider. She's not that sort of person. She wanted to improve and she has done. And the way she climbed yesterday was the best I've seen her climb and her time trial today the same. So good on her and, um, yeah, very well-deserved podium for her. Let's hear another audio diary. We got Lucinda Brand who finished 10th on the day today. And Vittoria Guazzini of the FTJ Suez team. What a ride from her to finish to finish eighth. Pretty impressive. After she's she didn't have a great start to the week, but she finished it off really strong. So let's hear from those two. Yes, Lucinda here for the very last time. The time trial. Um, a surfer, totally alone. Um, my DS thought she shouted at me a lot, but uh, the first part, <laughs> the radio was not working, so I had to do it all on my own. And um, yeah, well, it just hurt it like always. I thought um, just empty the legs. Uh, we have nothing after anymore. So I gave it all. Uh, I actually really did enjoy the last part of the TT more than the begin part <laughs> and um, I'm just uh, really happy that uh, it's uh, finished and that we can rest up I'm super tired I think we all are and um, yeah we are happy that Amanda could hold on to the 10th place and for the rest we all just <laughs> were looking forward to finish in time of the time trial and like you can hear on the background i'm already in a train going back home so um yeah that's it for now and uh, i hope you enjoyed every day my update and um maybe to the next time Hi, Escape and Happy. We've come to the end of this uh, Tour de France. Um, uh, it's been an emotional week and super hard week, but I'm very happy with uh, how I ended this tour. Uh, today's ETT was uh, one of the big goals of my season. but uh, And uh, of course, I wanted to give my all because TT is a discipline that I really like and uh, that I'm pretty good at. <laughs> So, yeah, of course, I wanted to give it a try. Uh, I knew that there were a lot of strong riders, uh, but uh, I want I wanted to honor the race. It's the Tour de France, and I just wanted to push until the line, and that's what I did. It was uh, really nice for me to go in the hot seat and to stay there for quite a long time until uh, my teammate Grace arrived. And, yeah, um, it's, uh, you know, it's a nice way to end the... Uh, 
this week because uh, how it started this is uh, good for the morale for the next week um yeah and uh, of course uh, now i have to switch my focus to uh to the track because uh, in a, a few days i will have the world championships team pursuit so yeah this is another big goal of the uh, of the season but um, i also want to take time to appreciate uh, the race because uh, it's been uh, super hard and uh, it's um it's uh, really something that um i'm proud of to uh finishing this tour de france because um i really didn't think that i <laughs> i could do it uh for me it's been uh, really a pleasure to share my adventure with you uh through the ups and down of this tour de france and uh, hopefully next year i will have uh, some more story to tell and uh, also some win to to talk about but for now uh, i just uh, enjoyed this small win uh, which is my top 10 of today and uh, with a good hope for the next weeks thank you very much for listening to me and uh, see you at the next races Okay, I feel like the sh most shocking thing of the day, the most shocking thing of the week, the most shocking thing to happen to women cycling in such a long time. <laughs> Where's this guy? Annemiek Van, Annemiek Van Vluten oh, yeah. finished 14th on the day. Almost, she finished one minute and 40, 41 seconds down from Marlon Rooser. A rider she beat just two short years ago in the Olympic time trial. And that put her in fourth in the general classification, which is just what alternate reality is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's clear from the last two days that she wasn't at her very best. I, I wonder if um, there was something was a little bit off or if she's just, or the level is just higher. It's something we've talked about a lot this season that the, the level is just higher in the peloton at the moment. And maybe she's a, a victim of that a little bit. Um, she crossed the line today and all of her Movistar teammates were waiting for her and um, kind of enveloped her when she, she got to the line. But as she rolled up there and, and stopped, she was just shaking her head in disappointment and really, yeah, disappointed, obviously. But as we saw yesterday on the Tourmalet, she seemed to bounce back very quickly and was you know, very positive when talking to the press about, you know, she's just given it everything she could and same in the mix zone later on. So, yeah, definitely a surprise. I don't think anyone would have picked that before the race and um, I wonder what that means for her from now. You know, she's she's still supposed to be retiring at the end of this season. Is there a chance that she goes, maybe I'll have one more crack at it? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, very unexpected. Yeah, I think a lot of people expected that she would win all three Grand Tours. She would go out on top, and, and there would be all these questions of when she's this good, why would she retire? And now I think it's a question of she lost this race. This was her, what she wanted this year was to win all three Grand Tours. Now will she not retire and try to get this one one more time? Yeah, and I'm sure we can go into the analysis of it in, in the weeks ahead, but um, it's interesting to me that you know, the uh, sorry, the Vuelta, Demi was the stronger of the two climbers and Nanamik won, you know, with some better race tactics, I think you might say. Um, Nanamik won the Giro easily, but Demi wasn't there. And then, you know, this week we've we've just clearly found out who's the stronger rider between those two. Um, and, yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't think Nanamik will make any decisions in the, in the immediate future and, you know, she'll have worlds just around the corner to think about as well. But... Yeah, I think this will sting and I think that there'll be a part of her that will wonder uh, whether it is worth going around again. A couple other riders to talk about in terms of the GC and today, like a little bit of a mix up in the top 10. So Juliette Labus finished in fifth. Overall, after her ride today, passing Ashley Woman Passio, who finished sixth overall, Cecilia Trip Ludwig finished seventh overall, Anna San Esteban also, they, they swapped places after yesterday. So... Um, Ricardo Bauernfein finished finished ninth overall, which is great result for her. Really great result for her. Tenth, our mate Spratty. Spratty, good mate. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a great ride from Spratty as well. Um, 
with her teammate Lisa Longo Borghini um, leaving the race, unfortunately, the other day for her to go into, I guess, leader mode or just basically do whatever she could on the tourmalade was was great. And yeah, love seeing Spratty up there. Just a phenomenal human being. <laughs> She's a good one. <laughs> Speaking of Australians, uh, Jess Allen had a little bit of a mix up today with her time trial. Let's Let's hear from her really quick. Hey mate, sorry about that. We just had a long old transfer to Toulouse Airport. Um, yeah, two are done for the year. My first two are done, second edition um, in yeah, quite a few years. So um, super cool to have finished it with a TT today. Um, really proud of Anna, eighth on GC. We came in with a goal of getting top 10. So um, we achieved that and yeah, really cool to see her doing so well. Um, and yeah, it was pretty hard TT out there. Awesome to have all the fans. I personally still had to go pretty deep um, just to make time cut. But really proud of of uh, the girls this week and how we all rode. And uh, yeah, looking forward to a week off now. So uh, gonna enjoy some time off. And yeah, really just cool to see how the sport has evolved over the last ten years of my career. Anyway. Um, and just how big women's cycling is. So uh, really special to be a part of that and uh, something I treasure forever. So, uh, yeah, thanks for the uh, the potties and uh, I'll send you a hey, mate, tomorrow. Peace out. Just a couple other things that we can talk about really quick before we kind of wrap up this pod. And as we've, we've mentioned most, multiple times and I mentioned with Gracie. Oh, wait, did I mention that I talked to Gracie? I talked to Gracie on the finish line. Let's hear that really quick. <laughs> I'm here with Gracie Alvin. Hey everybody. I'm a bit emotional actually. Yeah. And I'm also tired. Yeah. So tired. <laughs> it's been a really long month for you. Yeah, it has, but incredible month. Last year I got to do all of this for the first time and it, it blew my mind. It was intense, but so satisfying to be part of this amazing Australian broadcast team working for SBS. Everyone brings their A game every day despite fatigue. Uh, second time round this year was a slightly different experience because I wasn't shitting myself every day. I don't know if I can say that, but I will. <laughs> uh, but it was still, you know, really hard. And you want to be telling good stories all the time. You want to be getting people excited about this sport every day. And it's really cool to be part of the men's race. But the women's race to me is just so special. And every day just seeing so many people on the side of the road and I'm getting teared up because it's like we could have this as a standalone event now. <laughs> I would love to see this event maybe in June. You could have the Vuelta in May, Tour de France Farm in June, the Giro then a bit later on. Um, I think that we don't need to be tagging this on the back of the men's tour anymore. Not that it's a bad thing, but maybe we were seeing a bit of view of fatigue. I think in the last couple of years, they kind of wanted to piggyback off the excitement of the men's tour de France and all of the, the viewers there. But I feel like women's cycling has got its whole own fan base and viewership. And I think that just as many people would also just watch this without having watched the men's tour de france so like i don't know i i think that they'll continue this kind of format for a while next year will be a little bit different we did have that announcement um, about the start in rotterdam a bit later in the season because of the olympics um, once we get past that kind of uh funny year i think it'll be interesting to see how this event keeps evolving and I, I mean, I can see that you're emotional. I want you to, <laughs> I want to poke you, <laughs> make you even more emotional. <laughs> like, <laughs> <maybe cry. laughs> why, why are you feeling this way? Is it mostly fatigue or is it also just like the incredible spectacle we just got? Cause Ooh. that was like eight days of just amazing racing. I feel like last year the racing was amazing. The atmosphere was amazing. And it was this really cool event that happened. And this year it feels like it was just turned up to an 11. Totally. Like, I felt like last year people wanted to come and watch or watch online because they wanted to support women's cycling. They wanted to, you know, be part of this swell to, like, push us into this next stratosphere. But this year it felt like people coming to stages live and also watching on TV, they're watching it because they actually think that it's a bloody good race to watch, which it is. And I'm emotional, I think, because, yes, I'm very tired and I'm pretty spent, but also watching the podium ceremony and some of those post-race interviews that got me in and Demi Vollering getting choked up on the podium and 
saying I hope she's inspired that you know young girls want to be part of the sport and just to ride bikes and enjoy it as much as we do it totally got me it's getting me right now <laughs> I mean it's it's true we saw like so many young girls out there watching the race I saw so many girls like on their dad's shoulders today cheering on the women it was really cool and I was telling somebody like I was walking through the paddock looking at all the girls looking at all the bikes and I was saying like I I hope Lila can come next year like next year she'll be two she'll be able to actually kind of take in what's happening around her and this is this race means that our daughters daughters of people we know girls everywhere are going to grow up looking up to these women instead of looking up to Tade Pogacar because there is no women's Tour de France. Exactly and I've been asked over my career like who was your hero growing up and I could never name a female cyclist. I could name maybe a few female athletes but not from cycling and now like you can see little girls and little boys riding around on their bikes going I'm Lotta Kopecky, I'm Demi Vollering and it's just like wow that is so powerful like you can't even put a money value on that it's just completely changing the um yeah the landscape for sport not just women's sport but male sport too i i want to talk to you about like tactics and analysis and all of that stuff but i think we can wait for another podcast like <laughs> i think we need the whole crew and we need to sit down and kind of decompress and have a little bit of a breather and maybe some sleep <laughs> i want to ask you too like i feel sometimes a bit <laughs> almost like too present in this job did you feel like every day you were just like you sometimes couldn't even remember what happened because you were just it was just so intense for sure i mean i think i every single night i would lie in bed when i was done with work at like 1 a.m and i couldn't sleep because it was like there were so many storylines running through my head. There were so many stories that I wanted to tell and there was so much that I wanted to discuss and talk about and break down and analyze and all of these tiny little things that happen throughout the race that it's like there's literally not time in the day to get to all of them. You have to talk about the big picture because otherwise we'd be standing here for like four days <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. recording a podcast. And I, I feel like Matt asked me this morning, are, are you going to be happy it's over? And I was like, no, like, I want to keep doing this for another week. And I don't. I want to go home. I miss Lila. I, I want those little hands to, like, hold my shirt, you know. But I also just, like, I feel like every single day I woke up just exhausted. But the second I got to the start and the second I was around the race and I saw the yellow everywhere, it was, like, more than coffee it was just like straight adrenaline shot into my veins <laughs> and i just like i've never experienced anything like this before i i'm curious if it's if it feels like more energetic than last year because there are more people here for the women for you because it is it feels different right it does feel different it feels a lot closer to what it feels like at the men's tour de france which is a good comparison to make <laughs> i think <laughs> yeah i mean that we we don't want to compare it to the men's race because we want it to stand alone but we also we also want to compare it to the men's race because we want it to last like we want this to be a race that's going for years and years and years to come we want to be like 60 years old when it's like the i don't know 30th anniversary of the race and we're like i was there at the first <laughs> you know like we want this to be a race that's on the calendar for many 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 years to come and we want it to grow and develop we want it to become a multi-week thing and so does Zwift, which is awesome i think without them this race wouldn't happen i had like an awesome chat with kate actually at the finish and she was it kind of she proved exactly why I always say Tour de France Femme Avec Zwift and I a lot of like my my male co-workers chop off the Avec Zwift and I'm like no, no no you gotta leave it on there because like this race would not happen without them totally and I think a few people more than a few people get annoyed that we say it the full version of the name but it's so important Zwift is a major part of women's cycling you know they've been part of the Kenyan Tram team for a really long time and a couple of other teams as well so it's not like they've just come along in the last two years and kind of piggybacked off the success of women's cycling now they've actually been part of 
some development long term and now they're putting that extra money into this big stuff and they're going to continue for a little while longer and they're going to do year round activations as well so it's not just about this one race they're not just getting their bang for their buck this um, this week they're putting their money where their mouth is and continuing that storytelling the promotion of this women's cycling for the whole year round yeah all right I think you and I could stand here and talk about <laughs> like everything that happened because there's so much like I want to talk about SD works and the chaos that was SD works all week long I want to talk about Canyon Stram and like the the resurrection of Canyon Stram this week like <laughs> I want to talk about Phoenix de de Kunik and their week because what a week for that team, but you don't have time. (laughs) That's a lot. But I feel like, yeah, we could devote a whole podcast episode. We have to. Yeah. We need to get the whole crew together. (laughs) But as we're on the ground, it was really good to see you. Now you're going to jet off and see Lauren in person. I'm so jealous. I'm very excited. (laughs) All right. Thank you. Thanks. So as I mentioned with Gracie, we're going to have to do a bigger podcast with everybody once we all get home and... And get some sleep, to be honest. <laughs> but you want to talk about Sidrine Caval. Yeah, I do. I, I'm not sure we mentioned her all week, um, which may be a bit of an oversight on our behalf. Uh, she took the uh, Best Young Riders jersey on the very first stage and kept it all the way through to the end of the race, which is a, a fantastic effort. Um, she's 22 years old. She's the French time trial champion, rides for t- Sarah Tizit and... Uh, there was a lovely moment at the finish today where she finished her time trial um, securing the the white jersey and you know her team was there and she got a, a big cheer from the French crowd nearby. Uh, she has a little cheer squad that was right there at the finish. They had a big banner uh, and they were chanting her name um, and then her boyfriend was on the other side of the course uh, and she went over to him and they had a big hug and he was in tears and she was in tears and... Uh, and she went over and did an interview in front of her cheer squad. And uh, it was just a lovely moment. Um, and, yeah, a great week from her. And um, uh, to, to hold that jersey the whole way through the week was a, a terrific effort. I think we can dive into her a little bit in our greater analysis pod and talk a bit about what she's done in the past, maybe what what she could do in the future. I think yep. it's pretty exciting. When you take a jersey like this in any race, it's a good indication of things to come. So. Mm. Definitely not somebody that we'll overlook again. <laughs> uh, another person I think who is, who's worth mentioning is Yara Kasslein. After the week that she had, Phoenix Sukunik in general, in general were really, really aggressive all week and wanted to get ahead of the race, really, like make a stamp on the race, prove that they're, they should be in the world tour. Mm-hmm. I think that they definitely did that. Yeah, 100%. Um, so aggressive. And, you know, Kasslein's win on stage four was fantastic a real highlight for the week um i think you asked me yesterday on the tourmalay what my highlight was and i was thinking about it later while the tourmalay was good yesterday i think standing there at the uh the phoenix to Kunic bus while all the riders came in and the team staff came in and celebrated castellines win i think that was right up there with my favorite moments of the week um and she rode such a great way, race apart from that stage when you know she was in the the climbers jersey right until the tourmalay yesterday and she was awarded today the most aggressive rider of the race so uh, a great reward for her for her um aggressive riding and for her team for um yeah really as you said showing that they deserve to be in the world tour and um yeah a great race from them uh, I have a couple more audio diaries. This episode is audio diary packed today. So we have an audio diary from Georgia Williams, the Kiwi nat time trial champ who got to wear her jersey for the first time today. So let's hear from her. Uh, yeah, so we had the individual time trial today. Um, I was hoping for a better result, but um, it was still such an amazing um, experience. Um, I was wearing my national champ skin suit for the first time which was super cool, like at the Tour de France, it's like super special. Um, I had my family there cheering me on. Um, The crowds were amazing. And uh, it was just just such a cool experience. Like I'm disappointed, but then you just got to think like where you are. And um, yeah, even just completing the Tour de France is pretty huge. So um, no, uh, yeah, it was really cool and I'm happy. Yeah, just super proud and happy to be a part of this team. Um, it was really sad to lose Veronica, um, but we all sort of kept our spirits up and fought as much as we could. Um, yeah, and yesterday's stage, like, yeah, it, everyone just gave everything to try and get in the break, and we thought that that was our best chance, but, um, yeah, we all 
yeah, are happy that we, you know, went down fighting. <laughs> um, yeah, I think overall um, we should all be really happy and proud of ourselves as a team. And now we're about to go celebrate, um, which is super nice because um, you never – some most big tours and stuff, you don't really get to celebrate. Everyone just flies straight home. Um, so it's super cool to have a nice dinner with everyone, get a bit dressed up, and, um, yeah, just – celebrate together i guess all right another audio diary for everybody we got audrey cordon rago another just like darling of france so today would have been a really exciting day for her let's hear what she's got to say hey hubby uh sorry just arrived to the midway hotel uh yeah it's been such a good day actually um even if i woke up super tired yeah, also super pissed because, yeah, I, I, this is something I don't understand in the hotels. And yeah, I'm probably more sleeping more at the hotels than in my own bed. And people slamming the doors at five in the morning when they wake up, I never understood that. Like, why would you do this? Like, if you want to sleep until nine, nine thirty, why do you, would you like that people are slamming the door and that you, you, you cannot sleep anymore afterwards. So I was so pissed when I woke up this morning. I was very not in a good mood until I took the start of the TT. And there I was just like giving my 200% because I think it was necessary today to have a good result. And um, I crossed the line without any energy anymore. So it means that I gave everything and I'm really proud of that. That could express myself um totally and uh and it ended up being not a bad result i mean all the best riders were there so um yeah it was not a bad result so far um so yeah i'm really proud proud of my little team uh we've been fighting all together every day i had my girls like fighting every day and and trying their best and i think we have no regrets at the end of this tour we are really whole happy and uh, yeah, it's the beginning of a, of a really nice story with human power health. And I'm really happy in this team. I'm really happy about how it's going so far and how, um, how I feel like much more relaxed and free and, and just happy. That's the word. I'm just happy. It's a good, very good revenge on life. And finally, we have an audio diary from Ashley Momopasio, who came into this race with high hopes and I think sixth is probably not what she wanted in the end but I still think that she can be incredibly proud of the ride that she put in this week yeah she was great she was always up there she's always biding her time as she likes to do and um she fought very hard on the tourmalet yesterday and I think yeah I think she'll probably look back at this and realize that she gave it everything she could and not much more than that you can do really Hey, Abby. Um, so, yeah, today was not my day, that's for sure. Um, I was really disappointed um, in uh, my TT performance. At the end of the day, I gave everything I could, um, but the body uh, just let me down. Um, it kind of started already um, yesterday. I had a lot of back pain um, while climbing uh, both Aspen and the Tourmalet. Uh, yesterday, and um, I really had to dig deep uh, to ride through the pain. Uh, last night, my team physio really did her best to try and uh, release the muscles that were just totally locked up. Um, but it seems like it just wasn't enough um, and I felt pretty blocked uh, today. Um, so considering all of that, yeah, I mean, I'm disappointed, obviously, um, to, to have a bad day, especially when things have been going so well um, this whole tour. And then to to lose um, another spot today. But at the end of the day, you know, chatting to my team, um, teammates, the staff, everyone are, um, is super supportive and they're very proud. And um, when you put it all in perspective, you know, this is a new project. Uh, we're still a continental team and um, we were punching way above our weight um, this tour. So um, I'm very grateful to all the support and to my team and the vibe and the encouragement that they've given me um, all week and the belief. Um, and of course, there's still more races to come uh, this year. So hopefully I can uh, sort the back out and be ready. I mean, since uh, we're all women, I think it's important to mention that this is one of the hardest things as a as a female. I, I can't quite pinpoint what it is um, that has caused my back to lock up. Um, it could be 
uh, my saddle. I really have bad saddle sores, um, which, you know, happen from time to time and they're just particularly bad um, this time around, uh, which could be the reason why I'm compensating uh, with my back. Uh, but then it could also be the cycle um, because that's the thing when you're a human, a, a woman, I mean, uh, <laughs> you're a human and a woman, um, your hormones are constantly changing and the hormones can also play a role. Um, I don't often have back pain, um, so yeah, it's really unfortunate that it hits me um, at the most important moment of uh, the Tour de France Femme of X Swift. But at the end of the day, I fought till the very last finish line, um, and I'm proud of my sixth place. Um, and yeah, it uh, just has been such an incredible experience. Uh, what an amazing race. Um, the second edition certainly lived up to all expectation and more. Um, so thanks to the organization and all the fans out there who made it so special. I mean, that's what really makes bike racing is the people who come out to support us and watch us. So over and out. Okay, Matt, it's time. It's time? Yeah. What's it time for? You know what it's time for. It's time for the Escape Collective Fantasy Competition. I know you and I have been locked in a stalemate, so I know that I've not passed you um, after correct. a couple oversights of mine earlier in the week that I maintain were great ideas. Okay, well, I at least beat Wade. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's what really matters here. Yep. Shout out to uh, Jace Dupuy, who, who won the Escape Collective crew uh, competition. I'm very happy to end up on the podium. Uh, won a stage, wore the yellow jersey for a few days. And finish on the podium. It's a great week for you. Very good week for me. I'll I'll take that. Um, More importantly, in the uh, the Escape Collective uh, community at large, um, Dan N uh, took the overall win after yeah leading for a few days there. Um, And Julius Pepperwood, who was the the front runner for the early stages there, uh, he came in second. So. Yeah, he picked the winner on the last two stages, Volering and Rusa, to to secure the over in, overall win. So, congrats to Dan in there, um, and a big thank you to everyone that that played along with us. I think it was it was good fun, and uh, I'm sure we'll see more of the fantasy competition as we go forward. I'll never be playing again because I get too competitive <laughs> and also heartbroken. <laughs> I feel a bit bad for gloating throughout the week about being out of you. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sorry back. for that. I'm coming back next year with a vengeance. <laughs> All right, well, this has been amazing. Matt and I have had so much fun on the ground recording podcasts, writing stories. If you didn't know, we we work for escapecollective.com. There's stories on the website all week long from the women's race and probably have a couple more ideas bouncing around in our head. So definitely check out the website and we'll be back with our whole crew, with Gracie, with Lauren, uh, to talk more about, a lot more about this race. I think there's a lot more that can be said, but for now, we'll keep this one still pretty long, but <laughs> shorter than an hour. Thanks so much for listening. This has been the Wheel Talk Podcast with uh, Abby. And Matt. <laughs>